Welcome to Softcore History. What is up? Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host for the week, Rob Fox, and I'm joined as always by my two wonderful co-hosts, Jake Goldman. How's it going? Oh, it's going well. Good. It's going well. I, did, I thought you were going to throw it to Dan. Well, right I was going to say, and then also Dan or Jester. I thought you were calling me the gold man. You, you, That's you the Jake. Gold I'm man. the gold man, and I am the Players' Championship gold man AI. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's my favorite golfer now because it's the only gold man on the tour. The gold man. The gold man. That's so right. So if you're unfamiliar, which I'm sure 99% of the audience is, with the gold right. man at the players right talking, now. Talking golf. Yeah, we're <laughs> talking golf off the bat. Uh, they took every Players' Championship winner and just mashed it into this, I don't know, like liquid man That's made awful. of gold. That's yeah. awful. It's like <laughs> the Terminator 2 guy turned into liquid metal, but he, it's gold. Yes. That's what it looks like. Like it, what they should have done is some like unholy combination of all of them with like limbs and mouths and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's just like. <laughs> that would have like been much better. Island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> Dude, literally, literally, yeah. Kill me. Yeah, it's got like part, eight arms. The best part about it, though, was they redid the better than most shot on 17 that Tiger Woods makes the putt. And uh, they show it to Tiger Woods. And it's the gold man. <laughs> what does Tiger Woods say? And they're say? just like, get, they get Tiger's reaction. He's just like, whoa. He's like, okay. What is this? Sure. <laughs> Why'd you take me out of this? Yeah, why, why don't you just show the highlight? Yeah. Yeah. I have two questions for you, Dan. One, why did you jack your chair up as high as it could go? <laughs> yeah. He's showing off the I, can, I can go down. I can go down. Uh, I thought you were power. I thought you were trying to big dick us. I wasn't trying to lord over you, no. It felt like it. Okay. And two. I would never do that. What is too the, low self-esteem. That's fair. And two, now those are both questions that the video viewers will get more than the audio listeners, but... Why would you possibly sit in this chair, but then keep your sleeve down? Oh yeah, roll Should up I your pop sleeve. Pop top, pop you top. You can pop top if you want. I just you need to roll up the sleeve at least. Push it up. Listen. Show make up that. fun of it all you want. I'm not. It has opened up a new avenue. It's opened up doors for it's me. It's definitely gotten a lot of lost souls to come your way. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's what it is. It's a well, beacon. Yeah. It's a beacon for sluts, dude. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> like. <laughs> That's what that lighthouse is. Good lord. No yeah. comment. <laughs> All right. Oh, should I not have said that? Nah, no, fine. no, that's fine. We'll <laughs> okay. keep that in. Um, I'm not saying you're running around yeah. tossing dick it's everywhere. Just I'm ships saying. lost at sea and they like you're just an island that they find and can feel solid find land safe for a harbor minute. for <laughs> yeah. uh, just a park for the night to weather the storm, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But little do they know you are the I'm, storm. I'm just, I come up with a lantern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're raincoat. Will, you're Willem Dafoe in the, the lighthouse. lighthouse. Yeah, and Pattinson. I would you're say both. More, I was going to go more of a Charles Widmore situation. Yeah, I'm actually well, the gold man version of the lighthouse. I'm just a combination of Willem Dafoe and Robin Pattinson. Nice. Yeah. I don't know who you were talking about. I'll pop top. Though. That's the guy who who owns the island and lost. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Pop that top. Get the Ooh. show that lighthouse. There's no reason not Ooh. to. And the lighthouse, it's kind of historical. Yeah, right. lighthouses have served purposes in history. So I actually booked the next appointment with my guy Henry. What's what's the next one going to be? It's in July. Uh, it's going to be a fallen zeppelin out of the sky. Oh right, that's on fire. Uh, I I pitched by the way that the lighthouse should be shooting a beam of heat out of its light that's igniting the zeppelin, which I might be down for. <laughs> It's like, hey, man, I know you did a great job on this standalone lighthouse, but now that we're incorporating it into a sleeve. It's all shading, so like, yeah, it's super easy. You to can do. blend it. Yeah, but you need a more direct segue, like Rob is saying, into the next tattoo. I think the mm. heat beam makes sense. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. This all checks out. 100%. And Zeppelin, also historic. Led Zeppelin. Well, just a Zeppelin, Zeppelin. That's the worst part is that you try to look up Zeppelin tattoos. And it's and all it's Led Zeppelin. only Led Zeppelin <laughs> tattoos. Barf. Yeah. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Uh, anyway, though, you want to talk about some history? Sure. We got some history. What do you got today, Rob? So today's episode is inspired by current events. Not quite our uh, snow episode that you hate so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but Well, I hate it because of circumstance, right? Like yeah. I was literally living in the studio. That's true. You were. I had to record here. You guys were safely at home on Warm. Zoom. Yeah. I actually, I just hate doing episodes on Zoom. Yeah, That's why we so don't have any guests on Zoom. We don't. We hate doing guests on Only Zoom. Only in-person guests. Um, That's a hard, hard po- – it would literally have to be like a president of the United States for me to 
break the Zoom rule. No. It would have to be like... Man's oh, got to have a code. It would have to be like Obama talking about killing bin Laden or like Trump attempting to explain why he started Space Force. I believe in very few things, but one of those things is no Zoom on softcore. That's history. fair. I'm for it too. The last time we tried to do an episode on Zoom where it was just us three, it got corrupted or like didn't record right and we it was just also lost just, that episode. It was also just bad. It was a bad episode. Like not, yeah. I'm not because it was your episode, but no, like. No, it was also bad. We it, it, didn't, no, there's no match. There's no fucking because vibe. it was your episode. Yeah. yeah. No, it was like, you know, it's fine. We don't have to re-record. It's like, oh, it's a Jake Goldman episode. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was just a bad episode. And Jake was like, we can redo it. And we're like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's, fine. it's like, it. actually, we want to talk to you exactly about these kind of episodes. And we sat him down. Never, <laughs> never do them again. Yeah. That was this, the is, this is all true. specific. This is all true. This was, is real. Yeah. There's the history of trees, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the history. It was just it was, general plants, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, yeah, it was the history of fauna. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, yeah, the first seeds, huh? No, um, but yeah, we're here to talk today about. Uh, it's inspired by the Russian invasion of Ukraine because, to me, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, what's happening right now, is obviously it's a historical event that's happening in real time, but it is actually just the latest expression of a long, mm. long pattern. Are you sure it's not like a crisis actor situation? Are uh, we sure it's history? Are we sure Ukraine exists? No, I've never been. Yeah. Never seen it. Right. And also one time, this is how I know the invasion's fake, not to get all Alex Jones on you, but Zelensky smiled in one of those videos, and at no point when something bad is happening to you, does your, do your lips ever curl upwards? No. At any point. Yeah, that was the true. thing he was saying when, like, right before going on camera, one of the Sandy Hook dads was like talking to someone, and he's just like, "Oh yeah," and then like went on camera and was like, "I'm devastated by the loss of my job." Like, it's totally inconceivable that two seconds before he could be like, "Yeah, this is gonna suck," or, so, yeah. or something. Hey, we and don't, it, we yeah. don't want the smoke from the Alex Jones fans. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, oh, don't go down that rabbit hole. I'll up. take it. No, I don't no, give no, a shit. no, no, no. What are they gonna do? Call me a crisis actor? I'm Jewish. Yeah. I'm a globalist. Like they That's already true. fucking hate me. And also, Jake is uh, made of gold. He is the gold man. And I'm a, a hybrid man pig. Yes. Uh, and Born we, in a San Francisco lab. Yeah. Who Who is a hybrid man pig in this world that Alex Jones is like the tapestry of his conspiracies? Who is, is that a thing he says? It's just a lab that they grow in. What, is that they a real thing? Man, they man. I don't know, man. I don't <laughs> follow it day to day. To be fair, like I'd be down, I'd be low key down depending on their level of sentience, which... Pigs are already pretty sentient, so mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they if are. we were growing man pigs for you know organ farms, yeah, probably. You yeah, could everybody's just... everybody's against a sentient man pig organ farm until their kidneys fail. Well, can she just? Three... I think that the idea is for the organs. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. That's what Alex Jones was. Kind could of you just like three D print an organ anyway? Now I no, feel like you can. Not yet. I the... feel like we're almost there. Almost. That's why we got to ramp up a gun. We got to ramp up the abortions. I'm going to say that right now. Just so, so everyone at home is okay with this. We got to ramp up the abortion so we can get the stem cells for the 3D printed organs. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. So we can 3D print uh, to take a life, but we cannot 3D print to give life. Or to maintain it, I guess. Yeah. No. Did, did, we'll my, did my uh, dick 3D print a baby? Kind of. Actually, yeah. A little bit. Kind of. Like I gave the ink. For the printer. My wife's the printer. And you're the ink? Yeah, I was tossing the ink. You're the printer's ink card. pretty useless without the, the cartridge. Right. Yeah. It's completely useless. If well, anything, you're the... Well, you're the time. You're the real reason this baby's in the world. I agree. Oh, I've always said that. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the most sexist joke I've heard about that dynamic that you're talking about is, uh, well... If you put a quarter in a soda machine and a Coke comes out, whose Coke is it? The machines are yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I get down with that right now because I've been hanging out with Eli too much. I don't Hell know. yeah. I don't know who that is. From Giggle Boys. Uh, uh, it's, just a, it's just a guy named Eli. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you need to know. <laughs> There's a guy named Eli by the subway. Yeah. We're going to start bringing subway But I mean, like, what here. guy named Eli doesn't believe shit so like that? So it's starting to yeah. rub off, you know. If I, I, I come off a little too red pilly, you know why. Uh, I I can understand like taking uh, responsibility for yourself as a man. Um, I don't really understand why it has to be also including like women suck. Like why is that a part of the equation? Well, because they're whores, Jake. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay. Got it. You got to remember that part. That's the key to red pill. Yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 if there weren't women, everything would be great, right? Would it? 
Is that what? I don't even I, know. I, like, I don't really even understand Red Pill, to be uh, completely honest with you. It seems... That's another thing we could probably table with Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. No. Red Pill people are stupid. I'm going to just say that. Any pill. I hate all pills. Yeah, I don't want the blue pill either. Or black pill. Black pill. Black pill is just, a la- it's just laziness. I think that's incels, just in general. They're, well, they're just nihilists, basically. Was is that an- what it is? Black pill? Yeah. Was there an option to take all the pills? Yeah. Why? As long as they're oxy. Okay. Yeah. What happens? You die. It's all, first off, most, <laughs> most red pills and black pills now are so laced with fentanyl that you'll die. Yeah. yeah. So Everything's laced with fentanyl. Yeah. I think even, like, uh, I have a buddy who's a prosecutor back home, and he's like, yeah, these cops were like, can we test the weed for fentanyl? And he's like, why the fuck would you test weed for, who's doing that? And then they tested it. He's like, shit, there was fentanyl in the I weed. I actually had to go Everything. to the hospital the other day because I had some DayQuil that was just laced. That would actually be a funny sketch. It's like you're eating Burger King and it's so laced, <laughs> laced with fentanyl and you die. <laughs> Everything's it's like everything the, is fentanyl. Fentanyl's the microplastic of 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's got fentanyl in it. No, it's just become the new American corn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Corns like, and everything. There's like also, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. It's just fentanyl now. Yeah. yeah. There's also just like a fentanyl continent floating in the Pacific, like next to the plastic <laughs> island or whatever. Yeah. All these drug dealers keep siphoning, yeah. like scraping the top off the fentanyl <laughs> island to boost up their heroin. That's how you do it. I got a fentanyl island would be. Just to, that would just be like when so that, many dead fish. Fentanyl came like prevalent because of El Chapo, right? Like he was like the big cartel that was moving. I actually it. don't know. Um, I, one, I, I have the question like why? I'm embarrassed I don't know this because I'm a big cartel guy. Yeah, but also like I, someone at like I guess Purdue Pharma or something was like, you know what? This uh, morphine and Dilaudid and all this shit we make, not strong enough. We need fentanyl, which is like 200 times stronger than morphine or some shit like that. Hey, like, you well, always go for, back. The, you always go back to the drug dealer who sells to the guy that dies. Yeah, you want the, the strong shit. shit. No, it's crazy because like that used to be a thing where you wouldn't go back to that drug dealer if someone died from what they sold. Now it's like, oh damn, he's got good shit. Got the good shit. Got the good shit. Also, you might be able to get him on prices a little bit. It's like I heard this killed someone. Man. Yeah, yeah. Come on, buddy. You That's can start. Fine. You can haggle. Him. Let me get an eighth. <laughs> it's like an Italian market. Just haggle on the price. That's my joke. If like the. Uh, if the market is like too free or like too unregulated and there's just like shitty, like people will pay like a dollar for a flight from like LA to Vegas, but like they crash 20% of the time. Right. No, because like, but yeah. people are like, dude, it's a dollar. I mean, it's a fucking dollar. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That, I mean, that is important to remember though. It's like, uh, it was, I think we brought this up on the elevator episode when you were talking about. Um, oh, it was, yeah. it was the same thing. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's like there's no elevator regulation, so there's just like some building for the elevators, like the cables just snap. All it's the just time Tower of Terror. Yeah, in yeah, that yeah. Building. Yeah. And they're like, dude, but then people won't do business with them. And it's like, well, depending <laughs> on their prices. <laughs> yeah. It's like we'll take the stairs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, get back into the into the topic at hand. So I kind of think Russia's invasion of Ukraine is the latest in a long pattern of basically what they've been doing since the 14th century, probably 15th, 15th century, we'll say for the 1400s, um, where they just, they just really, really want to matter. And this episode is called Russia, the bridesmaid of Europe. Okay. The brides, bridesmaid is in always the bridesmaid. Never the brother. Now is this post Mongol? This is yes, post okay. post fighting off the Mongols. That is a big important part of their history, though, and that plays into their psychology of being the greatest country in Europe, which they keep trying, or in the West or in the world, any and all of those things at some point or another, because they kind of believe that one of their great victories as a people, one of their great contributions to the world as a people. Was keeping Christendom safe mm-hmm. from the Mongol horde. Okay, that is it. But that is sort of pre-Russia. That's more of uh, Rus, right? That's like at the beginning of the expansion east, right? For Russia, uh, east and south. Yeah. So yeah. like that's when they finally start. That that's kind of around the time they decide like we're going to go east of the Caucasus Mountains and like continue a little bit. They're okay. more concerned with Europe still at that point. Okay. Uh, I didn't get into their. <clears throat> fully into their geographic expansion. It's more like what we're going to talk about today are sort of uh, focal points throughout Russian history, extremely similar to 
the current invasion of Ukraine to sure. show that this is a pattern of behavior of Russia. And by the way, they're losing the the invasion of Ukraine, uh, despite what some people like to say. Uh, not that I don't respect Holloway's opinion, but I kind of think Russia's fucking losing me. I don't think they're losing. I think they are. Mm. I don't respect your opinion. I, well, I get that. I knew that. <laughs> like that's on. But I do respect the other dad's opinion. I would almost be more suspect if you were like, "Yeah, no, I actually, re- I really respect your opinion, Dan." Like, right? It's very valuable. No, no, no. Like that would be very scary. It's like, what kind of ruse are you trying? It's a to honeypot pull? situation. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of ruse. Yeah. Speaking of ruse. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Russia, the bridesmaid of Europe. So first off, this is a play on the term "the sick man of Europe." Uh, which was what the Ottoman Empire, how the Ottoman Empire was described in the 1850s until their full collapse in World War I, um, and was coined, actually, by Tsar Nicholas I of Russia. We'll get more into that mm-hmm. uh, in a bit. But essentially, the Ottoman Empire was dying and described as, as such. Um, but yeah, like I said, if the, dying, if, if the dying Ottoman Empire was the sick man of Europe, Russia is Europe's bridesmaid. And really the world's bridesmaid at this point. Yeah, started out as Europe's became kind of the world's bridesmaid. It's like a far third. What? It's like there's a one and a two, obviously, right in the world right now. Yeah, and there's a very, very, very. I don't think they're third. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I guess like you know, I'm pretty sure watching what they're doing in Ukraine. I'm pretty sure France could take Moscow at this point. Yeah, but, uh, if we're gonna go with like a, a sports comparison that we usually go to yeah Uh, this is the big three for the miami heat you have lebron you have Dwayne wade chris Mm bosh i would i would probably consider russia more like mike miller (laughs) yeah uh russia is udonis haslam right yeah you know another thing i like is i was kind of thinking of doing it based on college football sure russia throughout their history and even now i would i they're they're almost their closest comparison might be like Ole Miss. Ole Miss, Arkansas, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of pomp and circ, but like uh, Ole Miss is, is, uh, there's more pomp to it. Sure. Yeah. Arkansas. Arkansas has had more success in Ole Miss, too. Uh, yes, I think. They yeah. haven't basketball for sure, but I think Ole Miss has some older success. I don't, you know, I, I think we're going for the same point here. It's right. just like, people are like, just wait until we're back. And it's like, right. from when? Right. Like, from when? Dude. Like, like, when was the last time you were? We're coming. Here? Like, well, that's the other thing, yeah. too. Like, dude, we're next. We're coming. Yeah. Well, you know we could. We're a sleeping giant type yeah. of thing. You don't right. even know what I'm about to do. It's like a yeah. guy in high school you went or you went to high school with, and he is becoming a SoundCloud rapper. Yeah, he downloaded Fruity Loops or whatever, and he's mm-hmm. like, dude, I just downloaded this free software. I got it off LimeWire. I'm going to make the sickest fucking beats. And it's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. It's like, just wait. No. Just yeah. wait. Just wait. Just yeah. wait. And that has happened a lot. No nation in history, actually, that I can tell – has more frequently demanded to be respected or assumed greatness would fall in their lap or just kind of come to them only to be denied. And usually (laughs) the best part with Russia is usually in the most slapdick ways possible. Like when they like their history is a series of like, I, I don't know, like proud walks right onto a fucking rake. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's just like uh, confidently failing. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of Benny Hill music. Yeah, yeah. It's like how Miami football is ranked in like the top six every preseason, and all Miami fans are like, "Here we fucking come, dude!" But without the previous insane success of Miami, basically. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so the most recent. Hey, example- hey, hey, let's let's give Russia its due. I think like other than the United States, Russia is number two in our amount of episodes we've done on softcore history about them yeah yeah so we did uh saint olga or whatever we've done like yeah. four or five episodes we uh, did the kia kadidal of pass style of pass we did um rasputin mm-hmm. we did this one <laughs> they're pretty prevalent yeah in, uh, in, in our catalog well look well, they're just, a giant place with a lot of history because they're making history doesn't mean they're making good history well i think like last week was our first china episode it, it was well, it? uh dutch the East, East India, India Company. India Company. Well, that was yeah, kind of, kind of dabbled. Yeah, that's gl- gloss. China was an ancillary character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the main character was East India. Company. Right. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the most recent example of of this sort of Russia trying to be like, you'll know what we're about to do. You'll know what we're about to. Do. We're so hard. We're so strong. 
is the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and what was really illustrative about this current situation as, as it uh, uh, has to do with history is Putin's speech right before they invaded, when he was bemoaning the collapse of the Soviet Union, but more than that, the loss of territory and influence that the Russian Empire had for like mm -hmm. the 300 years before that. Because I kind of think, like we hear Soviet Union a lot when people talk about Putin and, and making Russia great again, basically. Make Russia great again is like the forever slogan of Russia, by the way. Like, but we hear about the Soviet Union and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure he only, the only things he actually liked about the, the Soviet Union were how big it was land-wise, because that was as big as Russia's ever mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. And then when you include its sphere of, sphere of influence, especially. Um, and, uh, you know, just how powerful it was in yeah. terms of influence and military. Well, sometimes power. you need a rebrand. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I don't remember his name, but there was a Russian leader. Maybe we'll touch on him uh, in this, this episode, but he actually forced everybody to shave their beards. Okay. Like he went over kind of closer to like more Western Europe. Yeah, that was probably one of the czars because so a big theme in this is that Western Europe thinks Russia is a bunch of fucking snow hillbillies. Yep. Yeah. So he came back from Western Europe and was like, hey, beard's got to go. Yeah. You people are garbage. We all look like gar. Everyone's laughing at Clean us. Clean it up. They're yeah. all going to laugh at you. Like it's, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing with people with inferiority complexes too, is talking about how people are laughing at them. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard anyone that sucks as a leader say, like, oh, they're laughing at us right yeah. now. It's pretty common. Um, but, yeah, also, you know who could probably take a lesson in shaving beards? The Chechens. Oh, Those man. beards are bad. They have dirty, dirty beards. Yeah. Really gross. And yeah. it's not even like they they have any fighters like Dagestan. It's like you see a Dagestan fighter with a beard and you're just like, okay, no, they mean no, business. No, because Dagestanis... They're like, oh, what should we fight in? I guess UFC, we can go fight in that. But Chechens are like, oh, we're doing war stuff. So we're all going to fight. Like, we're going to murder people. Yeah. Dagestanis don't got I'll no take the murder. Dagestanis every day. Uh, yeah, I agree. Chechens are – it's not that they're soft. I don't know. Their general kind of died but immediately. So Yeah, the Russians have lost like four generals. They're dumb. <laughs> they're bad at war. Chechens suck well, at said, war. I've yeah. said this on other podcast, podcasts, I think, but it is fucking hilarious that – the Chechens, and now they're doing with the Syrians too, but more so with the Chechens. It's like, dude, holy shit, Putin's about to send in the orcs. Yeah, it, like, it is. Here, it is that. Like yeah. when they started doing the like the, uh, g the, g <laughs> the jihad shit they were doing before yeah. they went in and all got murdered instantly. Right. It was like, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, no, bullets still work on you. Yeah, um, you wouldn't work on Habib though. You can't outbrave a bullet. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> Not how it works. Or Hasbullah. Well, Hasbullah. What if he becomes the ruler of Russia? I will submit. They'll, I will too. They'll airdrop him into Ukraine on the last yeah. day, and then it's over. He's a hard target to hit. Yeah, one hundred percent. Low center of gravity. Um, but I don't think Putin actually likes communism. I think he thinks communism is like pretty effect. What if we just get pretty Putin and Hasbullah in a room together? Do you think we could kind of work this out? I think only one man leaves that room, and it's Hasbullah. Yeah, yeah. it's Hasbullah. Yeah. Google him if you know who that is. They're like the same height, right? Yeah, pretty much. Same reach. Yeah, Vlad's a tiny little guy. He's a tiny guy. He's a tiny guy. Is he small? He's like 5'7". What? Yeah. I thought he was tall. No. No, nah, Putin's really small. Tall guys don't do this. I mean, that, that, that's kind <laughs> of like all the memes that were going around. It's like, we should put anyone under 5'9 in camps. Because everyone that's invaded, like you have uh, Napoleon, Hitler. Napoleon was actually not small. He was normal height. Yeah. But he was under 5'9". Well, there's also, they were measuring him in French feet. But you know he was. But he everyone was under five nine back then. It doesn't matter. Hitler, <laughs> I think, was like roughly five nine. Um, like anybody that's created or just had like a, a world impact invasion has been under five nine. Yeah, he was five nine. Uh, I mean, Genghis was probably. Pretty who short. even knows how short? How he, dude? He was. Five nine's a wild number. You know who else was five nine? Pol Pot. Pol Pot. Yeah. Ah, Pol Pot. See, fuck, dude, super short. cuck Jake's best okay, friend, but, Pot. and yeah. none dude, of us are under five nine. But so dude, we don't dunk on these fucks. Mao Zedong, five eleven. Well, Mao Zedong is a revolutionary hero, Rob. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. He didn't invade shit, except for a lot of things. Yeah, yeah but also, was he five? Is it, was that like a combine five eleven? He was five eleven. Dude, Stalin was five five. Uh -huh. Stalin what? Was tiny. I'm telling you, all these guys are short. How, it's all if I, God damn. If five five Joseph Stalin walked up to me, <laughs> just punch him in the face. Yeah, 
I would be like, what are you doing, you little guy? <laughs> Stop it. Hey there, buddy. Yeah, hey. What, you're just pet him on the head? Hey, sweetie. I know you're in a tizzy He's about He's shorter than whole... my wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking crazy. If fucking 5'5", five, five, Joseph Stalin came up to me, I would just pick him up and fuck him. Yeah. You'd have sex Honestly, with him. why not? He was a beautiful man. Well, when, when he was younger, younger when yeah. he was younger, yeah. he was very handsome. So Putin's not really a communist, which is really funny because a lot of tankies are super pro Russia invading Ukraine because they're just like morons and they're like, Putin's Russian. Russian used to be communist, so pro go go Russia. Ah, oh, dude. Well, tankies are stupid. Right. Yeah. Bad news. Vladimir Putin doesn't strike me as a big proletariat guy. No, he's not. <laughs> he strikes me as very much the fucking opposite of that. He's a big bourgeoisie guy. Yeah. Uh, Putin, is, he's a czarist, is yeah. what I really think. He wants the Soviet borders and all that stuff, but he wants imperial Russian like governance and culture. Evidence, by the way, this is something I did not realize about Putin. Big, I don't think he actually is a Christian, but he is big on the Christian rhetoric. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's an Orthodox nationalist. He is movement. a Russian Orthodox yeah. nationalist. Yeah, yeah. And that also plays a lot into this history. I also think, by the way, what's really funny about Putin is I think he's also kind of like a low-key, like, Slavic supremacist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the Slavs are like the uh, – well, they're in here, but, like, they don't – they look down on Slavic people. No, he is a Slav. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm thinking the, of uh, – The Nazis hated Slavs. I'm thinking – yeah, I'm backwards. Right, yeah. Um, and also, most of Western Europe thought Slavs were fucking idiots. But I think yeah. he's, he is a Slav, and I think – He's a little bit of like a Slavic supremacist. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm getting I'm mixed up. Slav, Mysteries. by the way, is where the word slave comes from. Mm -hmm. What? Really? Yeah. Because uh, uh, like Ottomans and all the and like Tartars and, and, and shit like that were fucking raiding Slavic areas and selling them off. Damn. Big part of Russian history, too. Uh, so the word slave literally comes from Slav. Yeah. I That's believe. crazy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, regardless, both the czars and Soviets uh, fell into the same trap. Over and over again, the same. It's all Russian. Forget, forget like czar, so like communists. Like those are just head coaches. Yeah, it's forms of government for a for a program. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The program is. It's like a. It's like again. It's like a college football program or a, or a baseball team or something. They have no matter who's coaching them. They got the same fucking luck. Yeah. All through their fucking history, it defines them. That is what Russia is. Got it. In my mind. Sure. Yeah. They they are essentially NCIS. Yeah. Just reboot it over and over again. New Orleans, Vegas. Miami. I love NCIS New Orleans. Great show. <laughs> yeah. San Diego. That's what convinced me to get married in New Orleans. Really? NC yeah, NCIS New Orleans. We were watching it and we were just Is that the one with uh Ice Cube? Or no, that's, not Ice Cube. That's for you. Yeah. First off, that's LL Cool J. Different black guy. LL Cool J. Um, uh, there's one with Ice T. That's S for you. Yeah, okay. that's Law and Order. Different, okay. different program. Oh yeah, you said Ice Cube, I thought Ice T. Yeah. And we were all talking about LL Cool J. It's just yeah. LL yeah. Cool J. Who survives in... Uh, LL Cool J is NCIS Los Angeles. I believe LL Cool J was the first black man to survive a horror film the entire way through. Uh, is that in the Deep? Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea? Yeah. Well, they got... they, they the Ironically, they got a... No pun intended, a bigger fish. They did. They took out Samuel L. Jackson. They did. So, you know, they didn't need a LL. fucking shock ate me. Yeah. Um... It also doesn't help, by the way, that people have always said, like we said, like I said earlier, dude, Russia's next, dude. Here, look out for Russia, man. They're coming, mm -hmm. like, dude, Russia, like, fuck, just wait, give it thirty years. It's a long time. It's gonna be, they're gonna be bananas. Yeah, they never are. Uh, in Democracy in America, actually, a uh, book published in 1835 by Alexis de Tocqueville, if you haven't heard of it, which, by the way, the last name de Tocqueville, he's really famous for like history students and people who like really study history oh yeah for sure um he kind of went on a train right throughout america and not really a train he kind of pre-train okay well pre he he toured yes, he, he toured america. america and kind of it was like a big slice of life how america operates yeah yeah he is probably like he wanted like america was still a very new country and he wanted to see what this whole like liberty thing was about yeah what's this experiment How's right it going? what's this yeah. democ yeah and so he wrote a really definitive thing on the united states uh, by the way, de Tocqueville, it's, I, I, every time I see that name, I assume that like some huge loser history student who is also a stoner, like named his bong that de Tocqueville. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Like it has to, it has to have happened. That's happened at least once. <laughs> yeah. Are you just projecting about your time at Mizzou? I wasn't a history student. Okay. Nor did I own a bong. I didn't name my bong de Tocqueville. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a history. I was a po political science student, but. Uh, Equally useless. Uh, 
I'll have you know, I can sometimes comment on conflicts. Yeah. You got a good job in the science lab? Yeah. I have my That's a, <laughs> my political science, my scientist yeah. coat, my yeah. lab coat. I was trying to set you up for being like, oh, you were a filmmaker. Oh, look, the camera's everywhere. Yeah. No. I mean, I wasn't going to knock it that. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Matt Gleason used to always make fun of me for doing theater in high school and like creative stuff in high school and not really playing sports or whatever. He's like, I played sports. And I was like, and now look at you. You're asking to act in my videos. That's right. So, and, and you, and I was like, and I'd be like, and you're not a professional athlete. Is that? Well, he is a tiny man as well. Is that accurate? Ooh. Gleason is a tiny man. Small guy. Small man. I don't know if he's five, nine. I think he, he, he breaches five, nine. But he's petite. Yeah. Yes. I agree. He's actually like 130 pounds. Yeah. And dropping. Because yeah, he, he's very vain. He's very uh, like Dennis from Always Sunny vibes. Big, yes, a lot. Hey, anyway, Matt. we're getting to it in hey, the Matt. weeds on that. <laughs> uh, I don't think he listens to this. Uh, anyway, for so, sure doesn't listen. To this. Alexis de Tocqueville concluded in his entire work. This is how he concluded the entire concluded the entire work. And I want to read this in full because it's crazy that he made this prediction um, in 1835. Now, keep in mind, in 1835, Russia had beaten Napoleon 20 years earlier. America hadn't even stolen land from Mexico yet. Yeah. We hadn't even won that. So, interesting. Uh, there, at, there, are at present, there are at the present time two great nations in the world, which started from different points but seemed, uh, seemed to tend towards the same end. I allude to the Russians and the Americans. Both of them have grown up unnoticed, and whilst the attention of mankind was directed elsewhere, they have suddenly placed themselves in the front rank among the nations, and the world learned their existence and their greatness at almost the same time. Uh, I assume he's kind of alluding to the Russians being Napoleon and the Americans, um, I guess, fighting Britain to a draw in 1812, but also the Louisiana Purchase, if I had to guess what those A were. draw? Yeah, we, 1812 was a tie. <laughs> We no. lost it. We lost. Nah, we lost tie, that war. Tie, bro. Um, I, I think that is by far, and we'll get to it uh, in the Patreon. I think that needs to be one of your arguments for one of our our future Patreon episodes. Who won 18, the War of eighteen twelve? Who won the War of eighteen twelve? Or what was the outcome of the War of eighteen twelve? Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. That that'll be your hot take. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm down. Uh, all other nations seem to have nearly reached their natural limits, and they have only to maintain their power. But these are still in the act of growth. Uh, all the others have stopped or continue to advance with extreme difficulty. Those alone are proceeding, uh, these two alone, Russia and the United States, are proceeding with ease and celerity along a path to which no limit can be perceived. The American struggle against the obstacles which, na the Americans struggle uh, against the obstacles which nature opposes to him. The adversaries of the Russian are men. Uh, the former combats the wilderness and savage life. I think he's referring to Native Americans yep. there. Uh, <laughs> the latter, civilization with all is armed. So he's saying essentially what abuts the United States is uh, the wilderness that they're manifest destiny. Manifest, uh, yeah. And uh, what abuts Russia is Western Europe. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, the conquests of the American are therefore gained with the plowshare, those of the Russian by the sword. The Anglo-American relies upon, uh, so the white American, I guess, uh, upon the a personal interest to accomplish his ends and gives free scope to the unguided strength and common sense of the people. The Russian centers all the authority of society in a single arm. The principal instrument, instrument of the former, the American, is freedom of the latter, servitude. Um, but, and he says this, by the way, and then you're like, uh, what about slaves, Alexis, and all that shit? And they're blah, you know, blah, blah. He was actually hi hypercritical of their treatment of American Indians and, yeah. and uh, slavery. But this was just sort of his final conclusion of the cultures as a whole. I mean, it's fucking incredible that he thought this. Like, right. well, and it's, it's salient today, still, I think, too, because, like, let's look at it from. Oh, wait, like, hold on, let me read the last yeah, line. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Their starting point is different, and their courses are not the same. Yet each of them seems marked out by the will of heaven to sway the destinies of half the globe. 1835. Yep. It's incredible. It's an incredible, incredibly prescient. Uh, I mean, I remember De Tocqueville because I remember that passage in particular. Yeah. Every history course I've been in about American history has mentioned De yeah. Tocqueville. And every teacher kind of stops and is like, you really don't get how incredible this guy called it. Like, right. this is, it's just like, he called the shot. He's Babe Ruth pointing at the fucking, right. out, out of the field, right? Like, he did it. Um, I think, and it's it's true. Like, America has always been based off of self-interest. And, you know, all of us, 
acting in self-interest forms a net good. Right. Whereas Russia does has always had a it is benevolent benevolently acting in self interest right 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 not right. not out of any sort of like um, nefarious dealings or anything like that but um, Russia has always been about first and foremost glory to Russia yes. not glory to yourself right like that's not part of it right yeah they are really even bef- like in, like even their past is dystopian yeah and we'll get into that in a bit too but like. It's like if like the way their society operated in like 1830 is the way you would write a, like a weird dystopian society to behave in I the mean, future. Look at their fucking literature throughout time yeah, too. Right. It's intense. Yeah. It's fucking hard to read. Yeah. It's it's dark. It's uh, I mean it it starts bad. It gets worse as the stories go on. <laughs> like I don't know. You know because like, the whole point of uh wait who's War and Peace Tolstoy. Uh, or just yeah, just totally. Um, yeah, the whole point, or like his whole theme, is just like you can't help what ha- like what happens. Shit's just gonna happen to you. That's kind of been like a running joke on this podcast. Is Russia has had such a dark and just painful history that now with Putin, they're just like eh, it's not that bad, right? And they're just like, yeah, what's new? Yeah, sure. Like their history basically begins. I mean, like they have like Kievian Rus and the Rus pre situation but sort of whatever you want to call the modern or like birth of russia starts with the mongolian invasion of russia yeah and what happened when the mongolians invaded and they thought that they were defending europe from asians i guess i've non-christians the uh, europe invaded them too because they're yeah. like oh dude let's grab some land fuck yeah. yeah 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 so that's just shitty things happen to russia constantly and it's really in the blood of the people at this point uh, trauma like is inherited yeah <laughs> like yeah um so they're I'll, the northeast sports fan of countries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, not fun. Especially a northeast sports fan whose team is always bad. So they're they're Jets met they're Jets Mets and Islander fans. And oh Knicks yeah, fans. Knicks Man. fans, yeah for sure. Mets Mets hit cuts deep for them for sure. Uh, and I guess like I don't know the World, Bill. War, World War II was their eighty six, right? Or they're the Bills in the nineties. Yeah. But yeah. The, uh, yeah, that's another one. Who, so, uh, who is their uh, Joe Namath? Gorbachev, Zukov. Oh. That was the, the general in World War Two. Okay, uh, who won him it? So, anyway, the Tocqueville no means the first person to predict or assert that Russia should become the most important nation on Earth. It goes back pretty much near the beginning of their history, within a hundred and fifty years of their founding. Which, if you think about it, within 150 years of the United States founding, we became the most most important nation on earth. Yeah. It's 17, 17, 18. Yeah. Yep. We pretty much were. Yeah. Uh, we were almost there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened to Russia. Uh, after the fall of Constantinople, this is the first really great example of this. After the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks in, in 1453 and the true real end of the Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire fell with that. Um, they, there was something else that was conquered in like the 14, 1470s. I said 1453, right? Or did I say 18? Um, hey, 1453. You think we're paying attention? Yeah, that's true. That's fair. It's a lot of data here. Um, people began wondering who would take up the mantle of Rome? Oh, who okay. would be the great Rome? Would it be the Holy Roman Empire? That might make sense. Um, it was a bit up for debate, I suppose. Like who was going to be the next Michael Jordan? Right. right. Who's the next MJ? We got next. Yeah. Who would be the def- who would be the next great nation? Who would be the next defender of Christendom and the most important country, empire, whatever on earth? One pretty important Russian, uh, Zosimus. Yeah, Zosimus the Bearded, who was the Metropolitan of Moscow, aka the Pope of the Russian Orthodox Church. Um, he tossed his country's name into the hat. He was like, you know what? We got next. We're fucking huge. We're fucking powerful. We got so many people. Like we have all this, this incredibly incredible land that we farm and all this, so many resources. He said, Moscow is the third Rome. And he wrote to Ivan the Great, the Tsar, or Emperor, whatever you want to call it, um, that you are the new Tsar Constantine. I'm sorry, you, he, he wrote Ivan the Great was the new Tsar Constantine of the new city of Constantine, Moscow. By the way, you know what Tsar means? 
Does it just mean king? Nope. You know what its literal, tra- literal translation is? No, what is it? Got a guess? Head honcho. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Boss. Caesar. Oh, the, well, that makes sense. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Czar is Russian for Caesar. Uh, Kaiser, German for Caesar. So Kaiser Wilhelm also called himself Caesar because he, I, I, I think oh. that might have been a Holy Roman Empire throwback. Damn, it would have been cool if it was Boss Babe. <laughs> boss Baby? <Yeah. laughs> boss Bitch. Boss Baby Wilhelm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you Can want. Wilhelm's Will, gonna play into this later, by the way. Okay, it's insane to me. Like, okay, so when did the Roman Empire fall exactly? Like seven. So the Western Roman Empire fell in like four fifty something like that. Okay. Maybe, oh, four seventy, like four seventy two, I think something like that. Okay. And then obviously the Eastern Roman Empire fell in fourteen fifty three. Okay. So, and then Ivan the Great, when they said this, was. Well, that's we're gonna get to that. Okay, and, and when this happened, just the, uh, a the, short time. Wait, what did you say? Sorry, I was just gonna say the nostalgia, like the the just okay. We gotta replace that thing. Right, like this thing fucking fell apart. Right, Let's, we need another one. Like everybody's like, who's the new? Why does know, there like, have to be one? Right, who's gonna be the new Nick Saban? Who's gonna be the new Yankees? Like who's gonna be the new? Yeah, bike? Why, like, like why can't we just have parody? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Nobody everyone wants parody. Everyone likes a reboot, I guess. Yeah, no, actually, no one likes parody. Everyone likes seeing the big dog get knocked down. Right. Big dog eats. Because uh, yeah. the ratings for a uh, two non-traditional teams in a Super Bowl or uh, whatever, World Series or, or uh, college football playoff, shitty. Yep. Always. Yep. You Always. need like an Alabama versus someone who hasn't done it in a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's bizarre. Uh, a short time later, the Russian Orthodox monk uh, Philotheus wrote... So no, so no, pious king, that all the Christian kingdoms came to an end and came together in a single kingdom of yours. Two Romes have fallen, the third stands, and there will be no fourth. No one shall replace your Christian sardom, uh, according to the great theologian. Hmm. Right? Cool. That's great. A, that's a lot to put on someone. Yep. Sure. Cool. Great. Russia, huge, powerful nation, even then, uh, even if it was slightly less developed than, than Western Europe was. Um, again, this is after the fall of Constantinople, 1453. Uh, maybe maybe they could pull off asserting themselves as the most powerful nation on earth or in Europe or whatever and, and be the great bastion of Christian power. Maybe they could do that. So how did Western Europe, countries like France, England, Spain, Portugal, whatever, how did they react to that? Uh, well, Russia, they declared themselves the third Rome in the year 1492. So Western Europe didn't give a hot shit because they were like, LOL, cool, have fun with that, you frozen hillbillies. We're going to go pillage the the fuck out of these two new continents filled with gold that we just found, become way richer and more powerful than you, and convert, you want, oh, and you're the Christian people? We're going to convert millions of Indians to Christianity. Suck my dick. <laughs> yeah, it's like, where are you sailing to? Oh, you can't. The sea is frozen. Right. See you, you don't later. have a fucking warm water port, you bitch. Yeah. Yeah. What well, timing? No. Literally 1492. Yeah, another person. They got Columbus. for something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they were just like, hey, you know what, you guys? And then they were all like, what? Uh, we don't care. Shut the fuck up. That's like giving yourself your own nickname. It's lame. Call me Dallas. Oh, shit. I'm yeah. kind of connecting dots right now. You know who probably started the movement to end Columbus Day? Putin. The Russians. It's Putin. Yeah. It was Russian bots. To be fair, they the Russian bots usually do do that type of cultural shit, right? They just get like, they just really like jump on and get like woke and whatever, or get like super, or super like racist or something just to rile people up. No, it's, like it's polarizing. It's the yeah, whole they, point. Yeah. They just hop in. It's the sort of vision. Yeah. They have the fire stick and they're just poking. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's hilarious. Uh, honestly, like when you spot a Russian bot, it's the funniest thing in the world. And I have done that before. Like I've spotted one and just like read their stuff. And then it was a Spider-Man meme because yeah. you're like, you're the, also a Russian bot. This I entire am. podcast operation We're Russian. is Russian operation. It's Paid for state. by Vlad. Yeah. I'll take money from anybody. I got a to, kid. S- I don't to care. say what they want you to say? Yeah. You'll take money to do propaganda? Um, If the check's large enough. Right. What's large enough? This is America. Actually, that's true. Pay to play, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What are we doing here? Come on. Yeah. Not that's fair. capitalism. Um, so, yeah. Russia didn't really work out for them. Russia was left in the fucking dust, and Western Europe lapped those motherfuckers several times over uh, in wealth, and then that wealth 
probably helped pay for the industrial revolution in Western Europe. Yeah, what do they fucking think? It's like, oh man, they just found something guilt-free pillaging. Yep. Yeah, that's what yep. they got. What'd you get? Not even guilt-free. They thought they were doing a positive good because they were converting those people to Christianity too. They're doing it for yeah. Christ. So like, dude, we're being pretty helpful and we're getting paid. Yeah. What? We're saving all these souls. Yeah. And we get to keep all their stuff. Rad. Sick. A city I'm, of gold. Yeah. Man, it must have been wild. What are you doing? What? You were like doing this. He's just bouncing. He's oh, just no, bouncing. I was doing that with my... my. You flexing fucking, your ass? No, my calves. You oh. did Kegels in the middle of the show? No, I was just stretching. That's it. All right. If you, want, <laughs> you can do Kegels. I don't care. I got Dan over here just bouncing yeah. up and down across from me. Yeah, I don't care. Do Kegels. It's fine. Okay. Um, next up, let's fast forward a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. He's still doing Kegels. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm doing Kegels. We're all Kegeling. We're little Kegler elves. I'm in a I'm in a constant state of Kegel. It's like sucking your gut in. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just gotta keep it tight. Yeah. Keep that Kegel I'm tight. I'm constantly Kegling. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> it's like, uh, just, uh, all the time. Just like you're forcing out a pee constantly. All the time. Yeah. It hurts so bad to poop. <laughs> you get poop while Kegling? No, I'm You're just, just saying like, my asshole's so tight that even the medium-sized oh, oh. shit is just, just saying, it's a real nightmare. <laughs> Keegley will take his shit. It's just like forcing like Play-Doh through that tiny hole have to make ever, spaghetti. Have you ever read that about like these dudes that get off to like sucking shit back up in their assholes? Well, that's a thing? Yeah, they'll like shit it out like three quarters. If you quarters. can think of it, it's a thing. Yeah, they'll shit it out like three quarters of the way. They'll fuck themselves with their own shit. They'll shit it out like three quarters of the way. Then I just don't think that's an in. option for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't just hoover all that liquid back up. No, it's not solid. <laughs> you got to turn that little hoover into a Dyson, buddy. I mean, if I could, because most of it's blood. So right, you probably need that blood. Need that. Yeah. To be fair, it'd be more of a showerhead situation for you, right? Yeah. Like it's it's like putting a showerhead on your asshole to kind of like tickle it, but it's you're doing it with your own blood and diarrhea. And we have adjustments. Yeah, yeah. attachments. It works. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, sorry. Thing, though, dudes fuck themselves with their own turds. Probably chicks, too. Just just get dicked down, please. Right. Like, just be a normal person and or get at dicked least down. Tagged. Yeah, like, come on. You have any weird shit kinks, Jake? No, I don't. I did send Jake a hot shit vid the other day. I will, I will say, though, when I take, like, a nice poop, I, I appreciate it before I flush. You got to take a look at it. You got to take a look. Uh, it's, it's just good health consciousness like you can like learn a lot about yourself from your shit like that was a good shit in, yeah in college such a, i take some pretty some pretty hefty logs and whatnot and just some pretty rank shits because i like to eat a lot of like hot sauce spicy food all that yeah. stuff and if anything that is what men taking pictures of their poop and sending it to their friends is what launched snapchat probably yeah. oh my god when it did it come wasn't out, nudes I, I it was only dudes sending photos of their shit i sent to all my buddies i was at salty dog saloon i took a picture of my ball sack and i drew a top hat and a monocle on it and drew a bunch of money signs i just sent with the caption goldman's sack instead of goldman sacks <laughs> <laughs> that one was sick Solid. that's like that's the best use i've ever gotten out of snapchat that's a good story about uh you sexually assaulting your friends of men. Yeah. yeah that's assault they it's not asking, assault they if they're asking for it. It's, it's not assault if it's my balls and my friends. It's true. You own your friends. They shouldn't be friends with me if they I want agree. disappearing pictures yeah, from me. <laughs> That's um, what you're going to get. All right. So let's fast forward to the end of Napoleon's reign. The exile, the first exile of Napoleon at the end of the War of the Sixth Coalition. Uh, Napoleon, his invasion of Russia had failed spectacularly like a couple years earlier. The Russians... Uh, dealt what they believe, rightly, I might add, uh, was the mortal blow to Napoleon's dreams of European empire. Um, they killed Napoleon, basically. Like, it, Is that where just the phrase, never invade Russia and the winner, yes. comes from? Comes Way from. more so than the Germans, I think. Why I do you think, think Russia's failing in Ukraine right now? They're invading Russia in the winter. Right. They claim it's part of Russia, yeah. and they're invading it in the winter. It's fair. Yeah. Putin didn't read a book. Didn't think about read it. Read a book for once, dude. So this is a sort of inherent belief. Before that, too, though, the Mongols fucked him up in the winter, and so did ja Japan, right? Japan's war with them was a little bit more neutral ground. Okay. Um, but yeah. I think it was during the winter. May Yes, but it was not really – that. it wasn't that part of Russia. Okay. It, it's like the furthest east in a peninsula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but Japan and did Japan get that dub. Japan didn't really invade. 
Japan did the right thing. They kind of desert storm. And we're going to talk about that too. But they kind of desert stormed Russia. Mm-hmm. They weren't trying to hold land. Okay. Right? Like they went in there, fucked them up, got out. Get in, get out. Give me a beer. Yeah. Get confident. Uh, so it's sort of an inherent nas- belief in their national history that they're the ones that offed Napoleon essentially. Kind of the way like a pillar of American history is like being at the forefront. We're, uh, we're, we're all about freedom. We're the one that like we're the ones that show the world what freedom's all about. Freedom. Russia's like we're the kill we're the tyrant killers, mm-hmm. essentially. Mongols, Napoleon, Hitler, right. all that stuff. Um, and this is true. And it, and it, the reason that it's more it's it's super overlooked. So a lot of people complain that like the Soviets don't get enough credit for beating Hitler. Um, a lot of people but, on that block this past year on the opposite before all of this. No, no people. Uh, I I don't. It was like six or seven months ago. People were like just trying to give this like the Soviet Union so much more credit for winning World War II. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. That like all, they were all over Twitter. And like there six needs to be ago. a pen. There needed to be a pendulum to swing on that because they don't get enough credit in the West. Because obviously we're going to talk about our own fucking soldiers and not theirs. <laughs> yeah. um, dude, my grandma used to say that my grandpa's mm-hmm. favorite people in the world were Russians. Because he was like, they're killing all the Germans. They're like, remember Stalingrad. Yeah, he was like, they're, they're killing all the fucking Germans. I love them. Because um, he was, he was, he would commanded a, a Sherman tank. Those things were literally nicknamed tin coffins. He was like, please take, put all the German tanks on the Eastern Front and fuck them up. Uh, but anyway, they, the West overlooks, I think, Russia's contribution to taking down napoleon way more than they do the world war ii thing like because we're all about waterloo and the seventh coalition blah blah blah. but i will say they also russia does also believe in their history that they're pretty much like like what the americans and british did to the germans was like that's nice but the russians did the real work yeah according to that's pretty if you ever get into like a history reddit thread it's pretty common. There's some back and forth. Yeah. Like, oh, who did, did the heavy lifting? Right. right. Yeah. And the real answer is it was a team effort, by the way. Like, look, and this is a little off topic, but I say this all the time when I have to when I have to get into this argument. Yeah. The Russians took up most of the Germans' resources, which was very nice for the British and the Americans. How fucking ever the Russians had no navy. So yeah, the blockade, the German, the Germany not being able to like get anything in the blockade of Europe, that was all the fucking Americans. Russia just threw bodies. Russia threw bodies. Meanwhile, but here's the thing: they wouldn't have been able to do that if the Germans uh, could concentrate the entire Luftwaffe on them, which they fucking couldn't, because we were the ones controlling the air in Europe and bombing the shit out of their factories. So they also couldn't make all the tanks they needed to butt fuck the Russians. Yeah, it's hard to lay siege. Uh, I'm, or I'm saying it's a lot easier to lay siege on a city like Stalingrad if you can just bomb the fuck out of it, right. too. Yeah, like, right. why would you even lay siege on it? Let's just wipe it off the map. Yeah, because guess what? Before the Americans entered the war, the Germans were not having any problems with the Russians. No. They were fucking the Russians up. It was only after Americans entered the war. Uh, that, and also, by the way, with that stuff, too, like, there's only two countries in World War II that fought a two-front war. Germany and the United States. So maybe calm down on on trying to diminish American efforts is a little annoying. But Russia does not get nearly enough credit for uh, beating Napoleon. After they beat Napoleon uh, on their own turf, they uh, home game. Uh, they co they co headed a coalition of basically every major country in Europe, marched across the continent, defeated the French, occupied Paris. The first person to ride into the newly conquered French capital, Tsar Alexander the First. Mm. First guy to ride in. Uh, after all the craziness that was the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars, which was basically a proto World War, World War One was not World War One. World War One was World War Three. World War Two was World War Four. World War One was the Seven Years' War. World War Two was the Napoleonic Wars, uh, and then you got the other two. In my opinion, that's what I really think of of that. Anyway, things Europe after all that crazy shit, Europe was like, we gotta keep things cool. So they kind of made. Uh, a little bit of like a proto NATO, but not good. <laughs> it's a, like it's not the League of Nations. It's no, the it's, super yeah. best friends. Yeah, it's yeah. called the Concert of Europe. The concert. The concert of Europe. Yeah, it was peace aid. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, sick. Europe city limits. <laughs> I Dumb. guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they wanted things to stay relatively the same, especially borders and then military power, governments, etc. When I when I say governments, I mean the, the revolutions and stuff like that. 
Nah, not, not, not so much. Um, there was actually an alliance within this alliance called the Holy Alliance between the Austrians, the Prussians, and the Russians. And they were like, not only do things need to stay the same, but they need to stay way more autocratic. Like, England's way too lib. Yeah. England's a bunch of lib cucks letting people, like, kind of vote and have power and stuff like that. Having a parliament. Yeah, yeah. having a parliament and all. Fuck that shit. Uh, and then they're not Christian enough or something like that. Anyway, unfortunately... Uh, for the concert of Europe, the Eastern question arose, and this goes back to the aforementioned sick man of Europe, the Ottoman Empire. Uh, it was falling apart. It was it was a sh- husk of its former self. It was dog shit. The empire that once took down the Second Rome was going down itself, basically. Probably took a lot of resources to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, In the years after defeating Napoleon, the Russians had come to see themselves as the biggest, baddest, richest nation in Europe. This is actually where I thought of Ole Miss. It's like the week Ole Miss beats Alabama at home, right? And they're like, dude, maybe we're going to win it all. Yeah. But then, no, you're going to lose like two You're going to go nine and three. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's like any, any SEC West team that beats Alabama that year, it's like, oh, man. Yep. You're going nine. Nah, yeah, not going to happen. Russia uh, and Tsar Nicholas I spent the decades after defeating Napoleon poaching land from both the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, uh, and the Persians uh, in a series of smaller wars that the Russians won pretty easily because they were beaten up on nobodies. Well, one nobody. They ain't played nobody, Paul. They ain't played nobody, <laughs> Paul. Uh, the Russia- non-con schedule is trash. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Russia was getting real fucking hyped on itself. Russia was... Real excited about who they were. They beat the greatest military commander in history. Sure. Beat the shit out of them. That's a good dub. It's a good dub. Good dub. It's a good, good dub. dub. It's a good dub. No doubt. And they're just like, dude, we're getting bigger. We're so much bigger than everyone else. Blah, blah, blah. Eventually, the British and French got a little uneasy over this, over Russia getting a little, you know, big for its britches. And the Crimean War broke out in 1853 over reasons that historians kind of think are still confusing and muddled and dumb. Basically, Britain and France weren't happy with how big Russia was getting. Russia didn't trust Britain and France. Um, This was for economic reasons, military reasons, all kinds of shit. Uh, Just power reasons in general. So 2014 was just a reboot? Yes, literally. Yeah. Crimea's been fought over so many fucking times. Well, it's a great port access point. Yeah. 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 Uh, Like, dude, Crimea gets fought over every 50 years. It's fucking bananas. Um... So Britain and France basically drew Russia into a war for getting too big for its britches. They also wanted to prop up the Ottoman Empire to keep the concert of Europe intact, to keep all the powers relatively the same, and to keep, you know, a somewhat formidable foe next to Russia. Give Russia problems next to their home. Yeah. Right? So they couldn't expand as much. Uh, And they used a religious crisis in Palestine, heard that one before, uh, to kind of justify all this, um, because the Ottomans... Uh, ran Palestine. Um, so the ascending fucking badass Russian Empire was like, fuck it, let's go. Went to war with Britain and France and the Ottoman Empire in 1853. They were like, this is it, let's go. We were taking some land, now let's get real get in, really get into it. Maybe we can go all the way to the Balkans, get in these fucking ports, all this shit, fuck the Turks. They got absolutely embarrassed. They got their shit pushed in. The Russians got fucked the fuck up. All they needed was a John Smith. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good Tur- the Turks. To be fair, the yeah. Turks were not really the uh, big contributors <laughs> in this war. No, but if they had John Smith, he would have taken scalps. You never know. Yeah, whole heads, whole heads, whole heads. And here's the funny part. So Russia, Russia, believed they were it. Right? Yeah, Russia thought that Russia was badass. So you know what? who didn't think that? Everyone, Everyone else. else. Britain and France didn't even feel like they were going, like, before they got into the war, they were like, this, Russia's not a great power. Yeah. We're, we'll be fine. Like, they obviously didn't want them to get bigger. They didn't want them to get to br- great power level. But going into the war, they're like, yeah, we'll be, this is not going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they. So Russia's Kentucky with, like, 3-0 and under their belt. And they're like, we're fucking, this is our year. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Br- Britain and France still thought Russians were a bunch of fucking cabbage sucking hill people like they like uk yeah yeah yep literally yeah like kentucky yeah uh, well y- if you really want to think about please reference ba- uh, football football yes. yes football not basketball yes football. yeah yeah if you really want to think about how the rest of europe sees russia just 
think of the Caucasus Mountains as the Appalachian Mountains. Russia is wow. Europe. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Russia is Europe's Appalachia. Sure. To them. Um, Sounds like a good time. One French writer who actually uh, toured uh, who is good. The, the Marquis de Custine. Uh, he toured Russia in the 1840s to do his. He wanted to do an Alexis de Tocqueville thing on Russia, right? So he he toured it in the 1840s, like all excited to to be like, dude, I want to check out Russia. This is going to be huge. Yeah. So about 10 years before the war, and he wrote. And this is basically what the rest of Europe felt as well going into the war. Russia's aristocracy had just enough of the gloss of European civilization to be spoiled as savages, but not enough to become cultivated men. They were like trained bears who made you long for the wild ones. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. It's like, just be a fucking bear. Yeah. Stop being fancy. Just be not fancy. You don't need to do this. That's their thing. Real lipstick on a pig situation. It, and so it turns out they were just that, and they shit so bad they they shit the bed so hard in the Crimean War uh, that e- it made even them realize it. Like even they were like, "Oh my God, we're little self reflection." Yeah, they yeah. were like, "We are fucking trash." That's sometimes that's a good thing, right? You need that, Ma- and maybe it would turn them around. Humbled, maybe it would turn them around. It, you know, when you look at like the Red Square now, and I think of that quote, it's like that's someone that doesn't know how to build a castle. Building a castle, <laughs> look at that. That is the dumbest thing you've ever no, seen. No, that's rad. It's I, it's fucking sick. I'm just kidding. But yeah. it's like, it is very like, what were they going for? Uh, Fabergé egg building. <laughs> it is a Fabergé egg. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. That thing. Uh, the if For the audio listeners at home. It's the Kremlin. The, yeah. It's exactly what you picture. Right? Yeah. Is that is that the Kremlin? I think so. I thought that was something. I thought the Kremlin looked different. What? I don't uh, know. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. They were like, oh, my God. We're trash. Whoa, we're fucking trash. Uh, Tsar Nicholas's son, the Grand Duke Constantine, actually wrote, <laughs> after the end of the war, where they got just their shit kicked in, we cannot deceive ourselves any longer. We must say that we are both weaker and poorer than the first-class powers, and furthermore, poorer not only in material terms, but in, and this is brutal, but in mental resources. <laughs> Damn, we're just not as smart as them. Yeah. Spiritually broken. <laughs> Dude, that's that's really bad. They bro- like Russia and Britain broke or I'm sorry, France and Britain broke the spine of Russia's soul. Like that scene in Dark Knight Rises where Bane just cracks Batman's mm-hmm. back. That's what oh, 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 ah, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they've been trying to get out of that pit since They're, they've been trying to make that jump and they yeah. just can't they without can't. the rope. Yeah. It it I mean, this fucking war gutted them. This failure led pretty much, by the way, to the direct... uh, It led directly to the abolition of serfdom. Interesting. In 1862, I believe, or 61, something like that. I think 62 is the same year as the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, They realized that their serf economy, their slave economy... Yeah. ...couldn't keep up with industrial powers. Right, no, because people are just fucking pushing dirt around The exact same way the Confederacy was fucking economically backwards compared to the union yeah like the north was way more economically viable than the south the exact same thing happened in the crimean war you had a slave state fighting uh capitalist states without slavery and the capitalist states butt fucked them right because you have more people with more capacity to think because they're not fucking slaves right yeah yeah so that led to the direct emancipation of of serfs um which, by the way, is probably one of the reasons that Britain and France didn't uh, intercede on the side of the Confederacy mm-hmm. in the Civil War 10 years later. Uh, because, like... I mean, they were talking about it. They were potentially into it to just to fuck up America. Yeah. It, it was, it, geopolitically, it would have been smart. Sure. If they were super interested in... Getting some shit back? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Tsar also believed after the war that his soldiers did so bad. And now they also realized that their military technology was dog shit. Their administration was super corrupt. And all. By the way, does this sound fucking familiar? Yeah, it's tales old as time. They also uh, realized that free soldiers fought better than slave soldiers. Of course. Does this sound fucking familiar? Yeah. Do right now. Game of Thrones. Oh, do you mean like the people that are being conscripted and like it's a military exercise yes. and getting thrown into yes. fucking Russia's war? literally yeah. bringing surf soldiers 
in the war right fucking now. Yeah. Um, Russia, this is hilarious, by the way, also forced to sell Alaska to pay off war debts. That's how we have that state? So I read that, and then I thought to myself, because I knew we bought Alaska Who'd from they Russia. they sell it to, though? Us. Okay. We well, bought Alaska. We, we, we time jumped then. You know, that was, that was a... There's a, ten years, ten years. But they, they were, they needed. When did they, they were, sell it to us? Because uh, it didn't become a state immediately. Obviously, no, it was no, one no, of the no, last no. ones. Yeah, yeah. So when did we, we, I guess, state it, own Alaska? Um, trying to figure it out. 1867. Okay. But they were so broke that they were just, they had to like sell parts. So they and they been they, there before, man. Yeah, and they also realized. I think part of it too was. They realized that if Britain and France went to war with them again, or anyone else, or Germany or someone went to war with them again, um, that they would, tr- I think specifically Britain though, that they would probably conquer Alaska and take yeah. it from. So they didn't want Britain well, to have you Alaska. Had BC right there. Right. So yeah. they didn't want Britain to have Alaska, so they sold it to the US. Yeah. Uh, that was another reason. So anyway. This sounds like my 2019. What? How? Just Russia being down so bad that they're just selling off whatever they can. Pay the bills. Yeah. You're, you're, on, you're downloading the Poshmark app. Yeah. Like, come on, man. It, Facebook sh- Marketplace. Yeah. Be like, man, just buy this camera, please. As, yeah. a, as a fun aside, by the way, the U.S., most of the U.S. land basically exists because of other people trying to pay off war debts. Yeah. I mean, like, the Louisiana Purchase would make sense there. The Louisiana Purchase probably was sold to the United States because Napoleon needed to fund his wars. Wouldn't the Gadsden Purchase also be in that? Case Which one was the Gadsden Purchase? I think that's like, uh, that's that strip above Mexico of like New Mexico. Or oh yeah, that's a little tiny one though. But yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. But the other one, people forget. So like, the when, U- who owns Greenland? Denmark. Yeah. So when they were trying to off Greenland, do you think Denmark's just revving up for some battles? Yeah, it's a good asset. It's like owning a home, right? Yeah. You got to just let it appreciate some more. But should we keep an eye out for Denmark? Uh, well, no. What we should hope is that Denmark gets into a war. Because then Greenland's ours. Yeah, okay. then we get Greenland. Yeah. Uh, but also, too, Greenland will appreciate if it gets warmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Maybe some good farmland. Or also, uh, it's one thing that, like, those beaches. <sighs> yeah. Well, I, people don't think about it, but it's like, if you don't believe in climate change, don't listen to this part. But, like, it is getting warmer. That's a fact. It's happening. So uh, It was, like, 36 degrees this morning. Yes. There's it's a March. difference between weather and climate. Everyone knows that. Anyway. Who I do don't th- know that. Yeah. And I don't believe it. Okay. So, hypothetically, let's say it's getting warmer then. We're not going down this road, Jake. Who does it benefit? The place with all of the northern coastline? Like, think oh, of Russia is real hyped to have some uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. entire. Yeah, Russia's in. entire like game plan for the future is hoping it gets it's going to open up some shit. It moves the like, breadbasket yeah. up. If yeah, I, of if course. I was Russia, I would just be, I would open a thousand new coal plants. Yeah. <laughs> No, they should. I would be burning coal for fun. If I would you, have a coal burning Olympics. I'd be like, "Hey, get out that hairspray, yeah. spray it into the sky. Fucking Let's go. Load literally. up on some cows to fart in the air. Yeah. Yep. All the chlorofluorocarbons you can get. One yeah. million percent. No, because so that is kind of the funny thing. We they're do melting need, the permafrost. Yeah. That, so that is it. That is. Uh, and then they're bringing uh, it back th- to Willie Mammoth. Like that. That is where really pe- like the geopolitical stuff of climate change comes in is that like what we don't want to happen if climate change gets bad enough. And I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying that it could, or it might, or what would happen if it did is that th- if things get warmer, for one thing, our arable land, our farmable land becomes less useful and Russia's land becomes far more useful. Right. It it benefits Russia yeah. a lot. All now, to be fair, it doesn't benefit China. No, it actually fucks China. Fucks China. Yeah. Well, China plants 50 years in advance. They do. Yeah. But they, anyway. They do so not operate the same. The other part of the U.S. that it, that got that we, we got from uh, war debts is the original 13 col- colonies. We revolted because of taxes that England put on us to pay for the Seven Years' War, a.k.a. the First World War, a.k.a. the French and Indian War. Yeah. And we were like, we're not paying for that war that you fought to save us. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck my, your tea. My rights. <laughs> <laughs> but my incomes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, remember that too, uh, Tankies. We wouldn't live here if it wasn't for people not wanting to pay taxes. Right. That's literally the foundation of our country, that and religious freedom. So, um 
these people have always existed. Yeah. Like, Fuck taxes. Yeah. yeah. But also, let me believe what I want. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's the thing. Most people are fine with taxes getting raised when they don't own a home, basically. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, uh, well, there's... I'm not getting into it. Yeah, it's fine. We're <laughs> yeah, going to get into yeah. it. Um, anyway, so Russia, Crimean War, fucking embarrassment. Whatever progress they thought they made, wiped off the board. Like, no one respected Russia after that. Russia didn't even respect Russia after that. So Russia sought to modernize, obviously destroyed the surf, uh, abolished serfdom, all that stuff. They want to become a super-duper legit power. So they began expanding across Asia. They took Afghanistan, they took other lands on across like the steppe, uh, and they hit the Pacific Ocean, and they invaded Manchuria. And they also built the, the Trans-Siberian Railway. It's a big one. Yeah. That's a huge railroad. Is that huge. the Polar Express? Kind of. Um, it's not not. It's, it's the Trans-Siberian. Yeah. Um, but the problem was, it was, you know, the 1890s by this point, started to bump up against another little rising power called Japan. Yeah. Um, and once again, the Russians started to get it in their head a little, a little bit that, you know, maybe they were like the toughest kid in Europe. And it was like, you know, maybe their duty to defend Christianity and white people from Asia. Yeah. Right. Like, dude, there's a lot of Asians. Uh, one of the reasons they felt this way, uh, was because of the yellow peril being promoted by Kaiser Wilhelm II. Mm. He was really into the yellow peril. Essentially, Kaiser Wilhelm was like, dude, there's so many fucking Asians, and they're not Christian, and they're obviously not white. Mm. And one day, I, like, I bet they, I, they, I'm pretty sure they hate Jesus, and one day they're going to be like, hey, fuck white people, and they're going to come, and they're going to invade us. The Mongols did it. Mm-hmm. In the thirteenth, mm-hmm. in the thirteen hundreds or whatever, thirteenth century, they're gonna do it again. They're just waiting. They're getting horny to be a horde again. They're scheming. Yeah, they're down scheming there. little Asians. They are putting together all their horses. They're gonna yep. ride up and get us yeah. all. He was like, yeah. dude, there's so fucking many. So Wilhelm encouraged his literal cousin, Tsar Nicholas II. Yeah. Because all these all people are all cousins. fucking related. All yeah. cousins. Immediately related. Yeah. They wrote regularly. They were bros. They were friends. Uh, he wrote that he should do something about it. He wrote that God himself had chosen Russia to defend Europe from Asia. And so he was like, dude, take hella Asian land. Uh, Russia was kind of, they invaded Manchuria and they were potentially trying to annex Korea. Okay. As well. Or parts of Korea. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that puts them in the same place, the same kind of region as like that. Well, general sphere of like uh the russo japanese war right they're already in that area yeah so they're, they're, they're totally thinking there. about they're, that they're, they they basically border japan yeah in terms of water right like they're they're their empire uh abuts japan like it's next to japan well yeah manchuria is the the spot right above the korean peninsula right yeah so um that that makes sense and also yeah i mean like i'm just pulling up the map here so yeah like manchuria is here yep. that's japan like yep. it's they're thinking they about were, they here. were like the russians should take korea too Wilhelm yeah. said that and all that stuff so oh you have to show me a picture you don't think i just know that i don't know you don't think i know where korea is bro i served <laughs> so it's the florida of southeast asia everyone knows where it is nicholas loved hearing this but he was down to negotiate with the japanese and not get into a war over it he yeah. thought honestly that russia had the fucking um well like the political influence and he thought they were so much more powerful um all that stuff that they'd be fine. Yeah. Right. Like they're fucking Russia. Who are these little tiny fucking Japanese? They're not going to fucking do anything. This island nation. Like, yeah. We're yeah. fucking Russia, Japan. What they, they've existed for what? 12 minutes. As far as the West is concerned. Fuck them. We're Russia. We're Russia. Yeah. We, we own the swath of land. Yeah. That, yeah. So, but Nicholas was still down to negotiate. Didn't necessarily want a war. Right. Didn't necessarily want a war. Yeah. So then is. his cousin Wilhelm wrote him, a pretty scathing letter. He said, you're being a bitch. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You need to be undertaking the protection and defense of the white race and with it, Christian civilization against the yellow race and whatever the Japs, actual what he said, uh, are determined to ensure the dominion of the yellow race in East Asia to put themselves at its head and organize and lead it into battle against the white race. 
That is the kernel of the situation, and therefore there can be very little doubt about where the sympathies of all halfway intelligent Europeans should lie. Like again, he's like, they're fucking coming for us, bro. England betrayed Europe's interests in America in a cowardly, or uh, betrayed Europe, Europe's interests to America in a cowardly and shameful way over the Panama Canal question, so as to be left in peace by the Yankees. Will the czar likewise betray interests of the white race to the yellow as to be left in peace and not <laughs> embarrass the Hague Tribunal too much? Uh, also, worthy of a note, Hitler's not the only German who was really into racial superiority. Right. Well, all Europeans. No, they way. all were. They, yeah. they came from a fucking really small family line yeah. of white people. Right. They tried to keep that pure the entire yeah. time. Yeah. That's why you have all and these weird recessive things. All around that time, everybody was super into eugenics. This was like pre-eugenics. Eugenics was hot. 1850s? No, this is 1890s now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, eugenics is really hot. This is, I mean, this is when fucking Tesla is. Tesla was into eugenics, big time. Helen Keller. <laughs> Helen, yeah, Helen Keller. Helen Keller would have read this czar letter and been like, hell yeah. Good. Hell yeah, let's go. Even I can see this, what we're supposed to do. <laughs> wow. She's like, heard that. Tee <laughs> Figuratively, obviously. Go back sure. and listen to that episode if you haven't already. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a really good one. So Wilhelm was like, are you serious, you bitch? I thought you were white. Yeah. What, you ain't white? You like these yellow folk? Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, though, even though Nicholas was down, down to clown... It was the Japanese who attacked first because the Japanese were like, let's just do it. They're going to do it. By the way, the Japanese, what they did here, they did again in Pearl Harbor. And and the obviously the Russian uh, uh, rulers were different then than, um, than they were in World War II or whatever because sure, sure. there was yeah. the Communist Revolution. Uh, you can draw a direct line from the Russo-Japanese War to 1945. I'm sure you can. It's all the same. It's the same government, the same people, all, all that stuff. Like it's there's no revolution there. Anything what like do you that. mean same? The ru- <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean same? Yeah. No, the Russians were, or the Japanese, I should say, were like these are the J- the Japanese have fought in the Russo-Japanese War. They are the same. There's Japanese not a big like government. regime. There's not a big regime no, shift. No, this yeah. is the same Japanese government, the same Japanese goal, all no. that stuff that fought in World War II. It's the same fucking thing. Sure. Um, it's and that I find really fascinating. So the Russians, uh, but they were like, we got it, we got this. I mean, they were just they were shocked to be attacked at Port Arthur and stuff like that. In a surprise attack by the Japanese, but they're like, all right, let's fucking go. Again, they got embarrassed and completely lost face with the rest of Europe. They and this is like an SEC team losing to an FCS team, which I can't imagine. Could you? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we did it once. Georgia Southern beat us the in own, 2013. The own tackle. Yeah. We uh, blocked ourselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. own block. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's this fun. is, I mean, this was in terms of like how it was taken at the time. I and mean, in retrospect, it's not an embarrassing loss in a war. Yeah. Because Japan became what they were. Right. Yeah. yeah they were However, very powerful. at the time, this was about as embarrassing as a loss could possibly be. I mean, this goes beyond. This is Prairie View beating Alabama. Yeah, or Ole Miss. I mean, yeah. It, the yeah. the no. Well, this is the kid who said, "You're not ready for what I'm about to do." Getting his ass beat by the quiet kid in the other hall, like in the hallway. He just keeps to himself. Doesn't really like hang out with anybody. He's the sw- the hoodie kid that's quiet with Real, his hood but up he's all not the time. T- like he's a he is a pussy. Dude. He's in like yeah. D wing. Or you don't you, really know. He's you've never really yeah. seen him much. But when he do he does pop in. He doesn't really interact with anyone. He's the kid that wheels in the TV for the movie lesson. He's an AV. Yeah, he's quiet. He likes manga. And you're like, what's this guy's deal? And then yeah. he beats his ass. Yeah. It's like we're gonna kick your ass, AV kid. And they're like, uh, what? And then he starts to battle rap over his dead body. <laughs> it's like, all right, chill, chill. <laughs> Stop battle rapping. You got a good fight. So, by the way, Russia really got fully dragged this morning. So, you know everything I just read from Wilhelm? Yeah. Yeah, so Wilhelm's real motivation was that um, Russia was allied with France and Japan was allied with Britain. And france was not going to come to the aid of russia if they got in a war with japan who was allied with britain Mm -hmm. and so the whole point was 
if Russia, like, I guess, asked for help from France, they'd be like, ah, oh, dude, we can't, like, because then Britain and we're boys with Britain, so Our we fucking can't. Tied. So then Germany would be like, see, they're not your boys, but we could be your boys. It was to bolster alliances with Germany. It was to swap, a, switch alliances. Okay, so Germany, it was to get Russia and Germany on the same side, because as you remember, they were not on the same side of the weird alliance web that started World War One. Right they were on opposite sides. It was gaslighting. Yeah, yeah. That is so. In order to better set up war alliances, mm-hmm. they made a country go to war. Yes, they kind of, and then that country because they, because Wilhelm did think that Russia would probably beat Japan. Everyone thought Russia would beat Japan. Right. It's a layup, man. Yeah. So, Kaiser Wilhelm, you wanted Russia into a war with Japan, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just making sure. So Russia, getting kind of back to their whole. Like, dude, I think we might be it. Embarrassed harder than ever. Then, I'm just going to go through these last ones really quickly. Okay, so we've made a lot of sports analogies here. Yeah, that's kind of our default. This is just Texas football. Yep. This is Texas football. Like, uh, we don't have to make any more analogies yep. with yeah. sports. It's Texas football. It's yep. Texas football. 2005 was World War II. Yep. Yeah, and whatever the 70s were was Napoleon. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Earl Campbell is, Napole- is the Napoleon era. Sure. Yep. Um, Russia, again, is like, okay, okay, but we're still good. And then World War I happened, and they got fucking embarrassed in World War I. They left the war early because they were getting embarrassed so bad. Um, obviously, then the Communist Revolution happened, the Russian Revolution happened, blah, blah. They were badasses in World War II. However, it should be worth noting, uh, they also were still trying to chase clout Um using the Nazis and riding the Nazis' coattails before the Nazis invaded them. Uh, they used the Nazis. They invaded Poland with the Nazis. Yeah, there's, there's like a whole neutrality thing yep. with them. Yeah, And then had... used the Nazis' situation as sort of a smokescreen to uh, invade Finland. Yeah. And who fin- was an autonomous democracy that they had no right to invade. As much as you want to talk about Ukraine being corrupted, it, it was a corrupt government. That's fine or whatever. But like Finland wasn't. When the Soviets invaded World War II, like that was but just them stealing fucking land. Didn't Finland fuck them up? Finland fucked them up. Yeah. Finland took like four Russian soldiers for every Finnish soldier lost. There's a really famous sniper story yeah. in that war. The we ghost. might have to cover him at some yeah. point. Yeah. The ghost, I think his name was or something like that. We absolutely should. It's yeah. Finland. Yeah. He crawled like. It was called the Winter War and they fucking They beat him. the shit out of him. He for yeah. sure wasn't the Winter Soldier, right? No. <laughs> Captain America? Yeah. No, uh, he was, uh, yeah, the ghost of something. That's, yeah. I think that's where the ghost of Kaiv or whatever kind Eve, of like yeah. originated from. Yeah, no, um, I, there's some crazy story of him, like, crawling insane distances in the snow just to get, like, one shot And just off. his body count is... Oh, it's absurd. Absurd. Yeah, he's come up before on things when I'm like, what should I talk about? Yeah. That guy is always up there. I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe we just... Dude, ca- before, before the Soviet Union even, like, really got into World War II, they lost six figs in Finland. From that guy alone, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Fucking Maybe. He took out, I think it was like three digits. Yeah, I it, feel was, like this guy. it was impressive. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, so World War II happened. That's fine. They were great. They, were, they fought brilliantly and bravely, and they deserve to fully celebrate uh, their defeat of the Germans. I, there is no question about that. Uh, obviously, it's insane to say that they didn't need the British and U.S. help because no. that's ridiculous. But uh, That's like saying a quarterback – that's like a quarterback saying they don't need an offensive line. It's, it's like what did I say do. about sports? <laughs> so, I'm sorry. It's Dover. over. Last yeah, one. Last done. one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but yeah, like what? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't. You didn't need air air superiority. You didn't need German factories to be bombed because you weren't doing it. Yeah. You weren't fucking doing it at all. Um, and obviously, we took up a lot of German resources just fighting on the Western Front as well. And, and they and still. By the way, they fight the same fucking way still. Right. And they by just the way, march shit in. Oh, they throw bodies. They yeah. just throw bodies at everything. It's crazy. Um, I mean. If you got him, if he, the, the, you, know him if you, got got him. <laughs> you know what the fucked up thing is though? So that works against Ukraine. It's that good. works against Georgia. That works against Chechnya. Cause it's a tiny little baby. Ukraine's pretty big, like 44 million. That's a, that's a big country, but Georgia, Chechnya, yeah. that for well, sure works. South of Sesha is nothing. Right. Yeah. You can do that there. But here's the thing. That's fine if Russia wants to fight that way against countries smaller than them, but they, that's been their strategy to win wars against other big boys. Yeah. And 
they first off, it didn't work against the British and French in Crimea. They tried to throw bodies at them, mm -hmm. and it was a fucking slaughter. They can't throw bodies at America, who is twice the population of Russia. They can't throw bodies at certainly China no. or even just Western Europe. They Russia is 150 million people. I think the EU is like 700 yeah. million people. Yeah. It's they not, can't throw bodies at anyone. No, and that's not even the name of the game with war anymore. That's the thing. Like, we don't even fight that way, really. I think actually pretty much everyone except for like eight countries still kind of tries to. Well, because that's all they know how to do. Right. I mean, we don't do that. We don't no, throw we throw bodies at shit. No. We're just going to. We're like hilariously efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just we have so much more technology. Yeah. We're just going to beat So is this kind of where we end with the, the Russian history? Well, so you have the Cold War, and they get real, real, real close. That's the closest they ever got yeah. to really realizing it, the Soviet Union. I didn't know if you were going to touch Afghanistan. Well, and then Afghanistan happens. That pretty much, that and the whole Reagan spending situation, that collapses the Soviet Union. They were so close. Dropped off again after an embarrassment. Now, here we are with the Russians once again. Attempting to prove that they're like super legit and need, deserve respect after being embarrassed from trying to prove that they were legit. Okay. This is a fucking cycle. It happens again and again and again. What's your suggestion for solving that cycle? I don't know, man. <laughs> Show the Russian people that they're pretty rad, actually, and that they deserve better. Like, like they just, deserve better leadership. Dude, it, yeah. they, I, they, I know people hate using this analogy, but they are a woman getting into one abusive relationship after another. Yeah. Uh, like they fucking are. Czars, communist leaders, Putin. Yeah. Like they Premiers just. Or whatever they call them. Yeah. They, I, it is, they deserve better they, because they make brilliant art. They're, they seem really cool. I feel like Americans would actually get along with Russians very well mm -hmm. in terms of like they look at go look up like Russian videos. It's all them like taking an AK-47 and shooting a fridge full of dynamite. You yeah. don't think Texans would like Russians? God, who was the guy? The guy that was always on um, FPS. Somebody he was like a YouTube, big YouTube guy. Yakov for, Smirnoff. Is that what his name was? No, that's not. No, he, he opened something. In Soviet Russia. Russia. Uh, FPS. I forget his But name. fucks you. Yeah, there was a guy that would just shoot shit all the time. Like, he'd just get yeah. a crazy weapon, shoot it on YouTube. I used to watch that guy all the fucking yeah. time. Yeah. He was great. The Russian people are great. It seems like a great country. They just keep having They're terrible, hot. terrible. Yeah. Ter well, it's a funny family guy joke that every Russian woman is either a zero or a ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no in between. There's no. Yeah, none. I. They deserve better, but this is this is historically the sort of cycle that they're on. It's what they do. They 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 just it's like the world. I sometimes it's they're like a, a trust fund kid or something. You're like I fucking deserve this, and other times they get high on other people's hype. You know yeah, but I mean? they you know? cycle and they never take the post cycle therapy. You know, oh no, they never take the PCT. That's not good. Yeah. So their their, their, tea, balls their tea just drops. Yeah. Uh, FPS Russia, by the way, is was actually a guy from Franklin County, Georgia, pretending to be Russia on YouTube, Russian on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, he's just they, shot shit. They do do that though. Yeah. Like they love. No, for I sure. I mean, every dash cam footage you've ever seen is from Russia. All the best, and it's all oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Everybody has their own camera. Yeah, it it must be so. Why they started that shit, right? The dash cam thing. Yeah. Russians always had that. Like it's crazy shit happens in Russia. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you need proof that it even. It's like well, a bear Some, on a bike just yeah. came out and like fucked up my passenger, and then you know Russia is the cold version of Europe's Florida. In in a lot of ways, Russia, uh, Russia man, Florida man, one and the same. What did you guys learn today? Go home, Russia. <laughs> just go home. <laughs> Try again in fifty years. Or I guess four. I would they, prefer they don't. Yeah. No, I mean. I would prefer be... something new happen. Don't you kind of feel like the world is like, and I don't want like some global, this isn't like me being like, I want glo global government, blah, blah, blah. But don't you kind of think the world is really just like two countries away? From being a global government? Not a global government, but like everyone moving in the same direction. We don't have yeah, to yeah. govern ourselves, but everyone kind of like doing it right. Yeah. No, I mean, it's... No, nah, there's always going to be a dickhead. There's always going to be a dickhead, but, like, I just hopefully not one strapped with nukes. Because that's yeah. really the problem. My, my uh, thing is, like, some countries that are becoming a problem down, Actually, now. not even nukes is a problem. Strapped with ICBMs. There are some problems now. Or problems that are arising in other countries right now with, like, Turkey and Poland. Those are minor problems. Yeah, but... Again, Poland's our ally. 
So it's yeah. fine. What's wrong about Poland? They're, Poland? they're a little uh, authoritarian hard right. Oh, uh, like not like hard right, like 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 Brian Stelter would call Ron DeSantis hard right, like hard right. Oh, you like, mean fascist? Like not that, but like getting, cl- there. getting there. Yeah, like. I wouldn't want to be gay in Poland type of situation. Oh, 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 oh. like socially hard, socially conservative hard right. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Um, yeah, man. My thing with the one world government thing, like obviously there's a lot of problems that can come with that if there's no way to contest it. Like you got to have. I'm not for it. No, but but, uh, but my thing is, and this is definitely from my brain, if an alien comes down, if aliens are like, all right, we want to meet Earth yeah. president, who's going? Who's number one? It's probably the U.S. It's Joseph Robinette Biden. That's right. It's if for now. I would want the president of the United States. To he talk w- to he walked up to a six-eyed octopus and would he's just like, "Listen here, Jack." <laughs> would it just be the head of the UN? I, you know, it should be the former head of the UN, Boutros Boutros Ghali. Yeah, I think that's sure. who it should be. But did you? What did you learn today? Um, it is history repeats itself, but that's not something I learned. I think uh, I actually didn't realize Crimea was fought over that often. So that's pretty interesting to me. It makes yeah. sense though, for, because the the port access, and then also, yeah, Russia sucks. Oh fuck! I forgot to mention this in here. Really funny thing. That's kind of a Russian cell phone, but it's more like how could they have had the foresight mm-hmm. for it? So during the Revolutionary War, the U.S. Revolutionary War, um, Britain asked Russia to get involved. And send 20,000 troops to the U.S. to fight the Americans. Yeah. Catherine the Great was not interested because she was happy with Britain, you know, bleeding out. Right. On, it's like, that's your fight. Colonies or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is hilarious because it's, it's they sack, like, not letting the United States become the United States probably hurt Russia a lot in the long run. Like, who stops the Soviet Union well, maybe then who stops Nazi Germany? Blah. It's a, that's a fun history, like sort of a- exercise or whatever. Yeah. Butterfly effect of right. not helping out in the revolution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, God, you think about that, though, then the UK just gets fucking massive. Maybe. Yeah. Or they just can't manage yeah. the thing across the ocean and right. someone else. It eventually happens anyway. Yeah. You know, it, who's to say it just doesn't happen for you? I would guess that the Americas eventually would have just balkanized. Yeah, mm. so you mean just like many states? Yeah. yeah, like a lot of territories. I mean, yeah, especially like think of like the like west of the Mississippi. How do you govern that from it wouldn't have the been. UK? Yeah. Well, if anything, Russia might have moved in just across the strait. Yeah, why not? And down. Why not? Um, what did you learn today, Daniel? Uh, I learned that they were actually kind of uh, self-aware when they of their failures. Yeah, after sometimes. the first Crimean War. Sometimes. There's like, sometimes. Ooh. But then other times. <laughs> they're, they ca- they're, honestly, Russia's problem is that they're usually deeply very not self-aware. Russia is that kid that keeps touching the hot stove and expecting himself to be able to do it. Or yeah. is yeah. Russia so self-aware that they keep getting in their way? They're in their own head. I think they they're definitely in their own head. Yeah. They're definitely. Oh, they're absolutely head. in their yeah. own head. There's, there's no country on earth whose psychology is more fascinating to me, not even the United States, than Russia's. And the United States is a fascinating one in its own right. Yeah, sure. It's one of the weirdest yeah. by far. Oh, yeah. But, Freud uh, was wrong. It, the Irish are not the only people impervious to psychoanalysis. <laughs> I don't even think that's uh, – the Russians aren't impervious to psychoanalysis. It's just that the it's, Americans it's, are. Yeah, I, I would say Americans are for sure. And then Russians are like – it's just the same fucking story in every brain. And then who is this episode's Hitler? Hitler. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wilhelm was a fucking <laughs> Wilhelm douchebag. Yeah. Calls Hitler. Yeah. In a way. I would say, yeah, all the genocide, saber rattling. Yeah. Protect the white guys. Like, Yeah. But it was really just for, you know. Kaiser, Kaiser gonna Kaiser. I just still, my favorite thing in the whole, and I had read this long before we did this episode, but just de Tocqueville calling that. That's such a fucking, it's, it is, I, there's a reason I remembered as soon as you like said his name, I was like, I got like the flash of me sitting in senior year American government class in high school. And right. Like the guy, my teacher at the time talking about that. And it's like, yep. That's still pretty crazy. You got that so right. I don't know. I think uh, John Titter or whatever on the message forums that called 9-11, I think that was more impressive. Yeah. What? Do you remember that guy? John Titter? The guy that claimed to be from the future and then 
just like was on a message form saying like 9 11 is going to happen. I don't don't remember that. It was a it was a fake thing, but they, uh, a time traveler's tale by John Titter. Yeah. Titter, Titter, Titter. Yeah, interesting. I'm gonna look into this now. Oh, he oh he was on Art Bell. Yeah. That, oh, that's good. I'm gonna definitely. If you have you guys ever listened to Coast to Coast or Post yeah, to Post? Back in yeah, the day, like yeah. oh. Whew. Good it was stuff. fun. Good times. Yeah. That's like harmless conspiracy stuff. That's though. what I miss. That's what I miss so yeah. much. I miss early InfoWars. It's, it's not being like there were no, like the, all the f- fake, all the d- dead kids at Sandy Hook are fake. No, yeah. That's a h- really hurtful conspiracy theory. Right. Like, no, I mean, like, there's definitely conspiracy theories that we won't get into it. Never mind. No. I'll start talking no, about no. conspiracy theories. That'll be another theory. Ooh, sure I had a, I, I found a good one that I think you should do. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but I this, Saturn- found it in research for this. Uh, the new chronology. And it has to do with Ru- the sort of Russian superiority situation. Oh, you want me to do another it, Russian conspiracy well, episode? Another they, Russian episode. They believe See? that uh, the Roman Empire was fake. What? And shit like that. <laughs> I Look up the that. new new chronology. I'll send you the that link. That seems fun. But uh, New chronology? Fomenko? Yeah. Pseudo historical so. yeah. conspiracy. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's your fucking wheelhouse. Yeah, this is that. Right. Well, take it offline then. Yeah, we will. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for today. Make sure to check out the website, softcorehistory.com, buy some merch. I got plenty of new merch. Some people have already, uh, bought their teas. Shout out to, I forget his name, but dude, the guy who sent us the, I am ungovernable thing, the picture. Wearing the Unabomber hoodie. Wearing the Unabomber hoodie with his fucking assault rifle. Yeah. That was (laughs) sick. Sunglasses on. I couldn't see his face really. That was, uh, yikes. I don't know that I've ever laughed that hard and been that afraid at (laughs) the same time. It's like, uh, you were already like that. You just like the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Thanks for buying. That's the caption that really did. Yeah, and thanks for buying that. Governable. Yeah, we got hats, uh, tees, crew neck uh, sweaters. That's the American psychology, by the way. That's the one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Go ahead and leave a review if you can uh, on both Spotify and Apple. Spotify, you just have to hit the star, give us five stars. Please and thank you. Uh, leave a review. That helps us significantly um, move up the charts on Apple. Uh, tell a friend about the podcast. That's always, you know, word of mouth is the best way to grow this podcast and uh, helps us get paid. And all those proceeds go to us. So that's sick. They do. And then, uh, yeah. We um, are launching a Patreon soon. We're, we're launching a Patreon with some con- We've already shot some content. We're getting that ready um, just so there's stuff for you to actually listen to and watch when you sign up. There's a great crossover with us and the Iconoblast. Iconoblast, yeah. We do a quiz uh, game show against them. A little game show. A history trivia. Uh, and then we have, uh, of course, an Instagram, Softcore History uh, on Instagram. Follow us there. Uh, we got plenty of memes from our friend Boosh. What's up, Boosh? Some uh, custom-made memes just for us. And then, obviously, clips, some funny little tidbits that we throw on there. And yeah, uh, that's it, man. Sick. So, sir. So, uh, for Jake Goldman and Tamara Jester, you just got soft served. <laughs>